According to state police, this is the fourth oldest cold case in the country to be solved using genetic genealogy. Troopers believe it is the oldest. Maurice Chivarella was laid to rest in this Hayson Cemetery in 1964. Her parents are buried nearby. Oldest cold case finally solved. Maurice Chivarella, 1964. Initial engagement. This is one of the oldest cases in the U.S., finally solved after nearly 58 years of investigation. Maurice Ann Chivarella was raped and murdered on March 18, 1964. The investigation into this horrific crime has been followed in detail year after year since the case began in 2007. Since then, investigators have conducted an exhaustive review of the possible killer's genetic profile, cross-referencing it with all database entries month after month, all in the hopes of finding a match that could lead to the culprit. Despite the dedication of the investigators, it was not until 2020 that there was a significant breakthrough in the case. Then, after a long wait, it was announced that the killer's DNA profile matched one of the entries in the database. Thanks to the hard work and perseverance of the experts, the investigators were able to find the killer. Stay until the end of the video to see how one of the oldest cases in history was solved. Content development. Since 1964, more than 230 police officers have been involved in investigating the case. But when the man was finally found, DNA technology showed a distant family connection, according to the 20-year-old student genealogy expert who helped solve the case of this raped and murdered 9-year-old girl. If everything you've seen so far has excited you, wait until you see what I'm about to tell you. But first, I invite you to like this video and share it with someone who loves these cases, so you're not going anywhere. According to fellow lead investigator Mark Barron, it is the oldest unsolved case to be solved through genetic genealogy in Pennsylvania and the fourth oldest in the country. The girl was abducted on the morning of March 18, 1964, as she walked to her school in Hazleton, about 80 miles north of Philadelphia, at St. Joseph's Memorial School on Laurel Street. Unfortunately, his body was found later that afternoon around 2 p.m. in a nearby coal mine. Authorities say it is an extremely strong scene as she was raped and strangled with her shoelaces. Her hands and feet were tied with them and a scarf was stuffed in her mouth. Who could have been the twisted mind that committed this heinous crime against a defenseless girl? The answer to that question is as horrifying as the heinous act itself. Stay tuned. What you are about to discover will leave you speechless. Maurice's entire family was torn apart when they witnessed such a brutal act of cruelty committed against the little girl. At that moment, their thirst for justice led them to vow that they would not rest until they found the culprit. Many years later, investigators would never think that someone so young could be such an important figure in this once unsolved case. The most difficult task I have ever faced. As if by miracle, Eric Schubert's intervention played a pivotal role in solving the case. I a lot when I was a kid, so I would see genealogy commercials and I would say, wait a second, maybe I could do that. But who was this unknown young man who managed to do in a few weeks what the police had been unable to do for decades? At the time, Eric was a university history student and expert in genetic genealogy, who eventually helped the authorities with their list of suspects by creating an extensive family tree that left only a small number of people who matched the criminal's profile. Of course, this work was not easy, as Schubert himself said. It was one of the most difficult genealogies I have ever had to deal with. Almost 60 years after this heartbreaking event, the state police finally exhumed the body of the possible murderer that Eric had found through his work just a few months ago. To the surprise of everyone and the joy of a whole country, the results showed that the DNA matched the genetic information left on the coat Maurice was wearing the day she was murdered. The killer was finally identified as James Paul Fort, born July 21, 1941. DNA was used to develop a profile. In 2018, that DNA was entered into a genealogy database in Hazleton, Pennsylvania, USA. But this would not be his first case of sexual violence. As investigators said, Forty had been arrested for sexual assault in 1974 and for reckless endangerment in 1978. They also revealed that he was a bartender who died of heart failure at his workplace, a dance hall in Hazel Township, on May 16, 1980. He was only 38 when he died. 
A review of the 1959 Hazelton High School yearbook shows Forte listed only once in his senior photo, the same photo released by state police during the press conference. Next to Fort's photo is a description that reads, James Paul Fort, he was 38 years old. He died in 1980. We understand he lived in the general area. Tall, blue-eyed, and handsome. Loves to sleep. Sports are his favorite, especially baseball. Future indecisive. He lists Fort's education as vocational. How did such a dedicated kid become one of the most wanted criminals in years? Fort was not shown or listed anywhere else in the 1959 yearbook under school clubs, athletics, or dances. According to research, Forte enlisted in the U.S. Army on October 16, 1959, and was discharged on September 28, 1962. Attempts to determine whether Fort's discharge was honorable or dishonorable were unsuccessful. State police charged Fort on April 3, 1974, the same day a 23-year-old woman reported that he sexually assaulted her in his Chevrolet on Stockton Mountain Road in Hazel Township. Another sad victim assaulted by James Fort. A search warrant was issued for Fort's vehicle, where hair samples were recovered from the front seat and mud indicated the car had been driven in the area where the assault occurred, according to court records. Fort was charged with involuntary deviant sexual intercourse, indecent assault, and aggravated assault, and was released on $5,000 bail. The late Judge Bernard C. Braminski sentenced Fort on October 2, 1974, to one year of special probation under the supervision of the Pennsylvania Bureau of Probation and Parole. He was ordered to pay the woman's hospital bill, according to court records. Other cases like this one, open without a solution, now have more hope than ever showing that after years of exhaustive search and much perseverance, solutions can be found, and that the guilty will always be found guilty. To close the case for good, the police held a press conference packed with active and retired police officers who had worked on Maurice's case, including the state trooper who first investigated the murder. Maurice's four siblings were also in attendance. She was sweet and wanted to be a nun, the siblings still have fond memories of Maurice Chiverell. They described her as a sweet, quiet child who wanted to be a nun and also had a passion for music. We have so many treasured memories of Maurice. At the same time, our family will always feel the emptiness and sadness of her absence, said her sister, Carmen Marie Ratke. We will continue to wonder what might have been and what could have been. But we finally know the criminal who brought our lives to a halt, and this nightmare will have closure, even if it's not the closure we want. We'll never have it, but at least we can rest easy knowing James won't hurt any more girls like he did Maurice, said Ronald Chivarella. Thanks to the Pennsylvania State Police and Eric, justice was served today, he said. It's a vivid memory for everybody who lived through it, and it's a vivid memory for everybody who grew up in this area, he said. What happened to him was the beginning of a change in this community. Like it or not, the way you lived in Hazelton changed after March 18, 1964, he said. Eric said, this young man, only 20 years old, had the initiative to get involved in this case. Knowing that it had not been solved, he decided to use his knowledge to help a whole country, but more than his country, to give peace to a family that had never had answers. He knew the difficulty of the case. But after solving the case, the family of the murdered girl contacted the young genius to thank him for the resources and time he had devoted to the case, with no promise of receiving anything in return. The Chivarella family finally got justice, almost 60 years after that fateful day. But a sense of closure that we know the individual that did it, and it, 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 that the individual is... Was it enough to fill the void left by Maurice's absence during all that time? We don't know, but we do know that justice may take time, but it always comes. If you like this video, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any more cases like this one. If you have a case you'd like to see on our channel, leave it in the comments. See you in the next video.